Hello, hello everyone, and welcome back to another Destiny 2 video. And today, I want to go over how to beat the, I think, third story mission inside of the new Destiny 2 Witch Queen campaign. This one is going to be the Ghost Mission, aka the one where you're in that really small circular room fighting that one boss that will one-hit you. This is more specifically on Legendary because the normal difficulty isn't that hard. And I'm going to be going over tips that you can definitely use, you know, a play style as well as a build. So timestamps should be in the comment section down below. So if you just want to skip to the build or the gameplay or, you know, the tips, well, uh, you know, you can just go to that instantly. Of course, if you are not subscribed, please do. It would help me out a lot. Only like 10% of y'all are actually subscribed, but you know, we, hopefully we could get it up just a little more, but um, yeah. And if you do like this content, make sure to like it. And if you didn't dislike it and tell me why, it would really help me out. I'm a small content creator. I would love the feedback. Let's go ahead and hop into the tips. All right, so tip number one. This one's gonna sound a little weird, just hear me out. And this is going to be do it alone. I know this sounds weird, but the Destiny 2 Witch Queen expansion missions have it so the more people you have on your fire team, the harder the mission is going to be. More specifically, the enemies have more health, more enemies will spawn, and they will be more aggressive towards you. That's, and you have to worry about revives because you only get one revive uh, each. So you can only revive a person one time, which will be very annoying because if a person dies twice, they're basically as sure as, you know, your, your entire team is going to wipe, which is just not fun to worry about, especially... If you just do it alone, you don't have to worry about that, as well as, you know, the enemies being harder, being more of them, and being more aggressive towards you. So trust me, I did it with a group of people, and it is so much easier by yourself. So that's going to be tip number one. Tip number two is going to be make sure you have adequate weaponry at close range. It doesn't mean have all your weapons close range because you don't want to be fighting the boss at close range because this guy will one hit you. But make sure you're able to, you know, fight enemies at close range, aka have something like an SMG or sidearm in your maybe your kinetic slot, which I'll go into more of this when I get to the build area, as well as I'll tap on a little bit in the gameplay section. But the reason why I say this is because obviously it's a close range map and you're gonna be fighting a lot of enemies at close range, whether you're fighting them in the actual dome or one of the sub like sections of the rooms, all of it's going to be extremely close. So make sure you're able to, able to deal a lot of damage at close range. Uh, I'd highly recommend something like an SMG or sidearm in your like kinetic slot, which I'll go into more in the build section. All right, all right. Tip number three is going to be make sure you're staying mobile. And this one also kind of brings us to the gameplay section of the video because this is a pretty focusing on gameplay. So when you start the encounter, he's going to be shielded and be invincible. But once you break that shield, he will be able to take damage. However, when you break that shield, he'll begin moving at you very, very quickly and very aggressively. And in both... And when he is shielded, as well as when he's not shielded, he can use this ranged ground slam that will send this like fiery streak that does stay on the ground for some time and it will do a lot of damage to you. So make sure you're staying well off the ground for, you know, not for a long period of time because you don't want to actually run into that fire. And if you're wondering about how this whole thing works, I'll touch on that quickly, but I'm guessing most of you already know. So he, he's going to start off with this invincible shield until you destroy a crystal either in the center of the room, which is going to be on the first encounter, or in all three of the side rooms on the second um, damage phase. And what you're going to have to do is you're going to fight a yellow bar. Once you defeat that yellow bar, you can destroy the crystal. And once you destroy all the crystals in the area, he will lose his shields. And that's when he'll begin running at you and uh, trying to kill you a lot faster. So make sure you're staying mobile so you don't get hit by him. And as I said, he has this ranged fire attack. When he does this ranged fire attack, he'll be stunned for about five seconds. So make sure that's make sure you're really utilizing that to either apply debuffs or do a lot of damage. I recommend just applying a debuff, aka with your grenade, which I'll go into later in my build section of the video. All right, my next tip is to clear the ads before you actually deal any damage to the boss. If you're wondering what I mean is every single time a new phase happens, um, whether that's him getting his shield or his shield lower, lowering, 
ads will spawn. Make sure you take these ads out quickly because you don't want to be interrupted in either one of your damage phase or them just simply getting in your way or dealing damage to you. So make sure you just take them out so you don't have to worry about them. Make sure you do stay mobile though because you don't want to get killed, you know, by the boss. So make sure to take those ads out because they're just going to be annoying. And if you use the um, weapons I talk about in the build, it should be extremely easy to take out these ads extremely quickly. Now into the build section of the video. So I currently use Titan. However, the majority of what I use for this build can be implemented on Hunter as well as Warlock. However, there's a few, uh, you know, things that can't be used on Warlock and Hunter, AKA the exotic. All right, but let's go ahead and just go over the abilities that I use. So obviously I'm on Void 3.0 because why the heck would you not be? It is extremely powerful. So what I use is I use Ward of Dawn. However, I never even used my super during this encounter because of something I'll touch on a little bit later. The main reason why I used Ward of Dawn was a more of a just in case kind of thing. However, if you do feel like killing a lot of enemies, feel free to run Sentinel Shield. I just like having this just in case uh, card. Next for the barricade, I use the Rally Barricade, which if you don't know, got a slight buff inside of Witch Queen. Now, instead of just giving reload speed, it now applies uh, stability and range when you stand behind it. Not only that, but it does allow you to shoot over it and have this like, you know, more of a barricade instead of just a big wall. But I'll also go over, uh, you know, how powerful the barricade is later with one of the aspects. Next, I use the strafe lift. So the reason why I use strafe is because as I said, you want to make sure you're staying mobile as well as in the air. And obviously, you know, strafe is best for in air movement. So, you know, you have better, you can, you can move out of the way better if something goes wrong. Next, I use sentinel throw. So the reason why I use sentinel throw is because it's a ranged melee attack, which is going to be extremely helpful. Not only that, but you don't even need to kill the enemy to get the overshield. You only need to hit the enemy, which is going to be, well, extremely useful because in these higher level uh, things, the chances of you one hitting enemies are very small. Not only that, but the shield bash is only really good for um, mobility, I guess, but you know, you should be fine on mobility. Uh, but this, you know, you want to make sure you're, you're able to utilize the overshields from your melee, which also go into more when I get into the aspects. For the grenade, I used a suppressor grenade. So the reason why I use the suppressor grenade is because one, it will suppress your enemies, aka it will prevent them from moving, which is extremely helpful. This won't work on the boss, but it will work on any other type of enemy, so they'll stop attacking you for a few seconds. Also, I use a suppressor grenade because you will be fighting quite a a bit of um, a hive guardians in this level not in this encounter but you will be fighting um hive guardians so if they do pop their super you can just simply just throw your grenade and take that super away just like how it is in pvp also it's just a good grenade to have in general now for the aspect so the first aspect i use is going to be bastion so this one's kind of a no-brainer every single time you cast your barricade you're going to get a full overshield which is actually a pretty decent overshield having 40 health this will also you know give it overshield to uh allies but you as i said you want to do this alone but the great thing about this barricade is it will give you an initial burst of overshield and you can also regenerate if you are standing behind it, which is going to be quite helpful in more of the subsections of the boss room, but it's mostly just used to give you an overshield, which also brings me to my next um, aspect, which is going to be offensive bullock. So the reason why I use offensive bullock is because every single time you have an overshield or in the ward of dawn, your grenade will recharge much faster, which is the honestly the main perk of this. So every single time you get an overshield, either by your uh, you know bastion barricade or by your sentinel throw, you're going to have increased um, grenade recharge rate. You also do gain increased melee ranged and damage which is extremely helpful for you know doing more damage with your shield throw which will then give you more um of an overshield but you know the main thing is just getting your grenade back faster so you can use it more the main reason why you want to use your grenade so much is because one of the fragments i have available which is echo of the undermining so this makes it so every single time you hit a target with your grenade that target will be weakened so you're able to deal more damage to them. And remember earlier when I said you want to make sure that when he does hit the 
the ground, you are weakening him. So this is a good opportunity to hit him with that grenade so you're able to do a lot more damage and then begin unleashing the beast with some of the weapons I have in, uh, no, that I'll describe later. For the other fragments, I use Echo of the Leeching, which is extremely good because every single time you hit an enemy or kill an enemy, you're going to begin having your health regenerate. Next is going to be Echo of the Expulsion. So it makes it so every single time you kill an enemy with a Void ability, the target will explode. It also gives you plus 10 to intellect. All right, now for the weapons and armor. So the main thing is the weapons, because but there is a really good exotic that works really well for this build which i'll go over a little bit later for the weapons i use an smg called the extraordinary rendition but feel free to really use any type of close range uh in thing in your kinetic slot just make sure you're able to do a lot of damage with it this one is really good because it comes with zen moment and frenzy so you're able to unleash a lot of damage on your opponent in close range it's also extremely stable with the perks i have on it the next weapon I use is Salvager's Salvo. So this thing's good for a couple of reasons. First, it's amazing at ad clear. And as I stated earlier, you wanna make sure that you kill all the ads in the area before you even actually begin attacking the boss because of you don't want them to be interrupting you in the damage phase. All right. Also, this thing runs with Demolitionist and Chain Reaction. So the main ad thing with ad clear is going to be with Chain Reaction. So when you kill an enemy, they're going to explode and that can lead to more enemies exploding. It also runs with Demolitionist, so every single time you kill an enemy, you're going to get your grenade energy back much faster, which is extremely helpful. For the heavy slot, I use Yellowhorn, so I don't really need to go much, too much into it. It's Yellowhorn, it does a lot of damage, and it does a lot of damage quickly. It also, um, you know, kills adds really well if you want to use it for that, but I just recommend shooting the boss with it. And now for the armor. So the main armor piece I use for Titan is going to be Heart of Inmost Light. So this makes it so every single time you use one of your abilities, it's going to buff the other abilities. So they did nerf this exotic a little bit in Witch Queen, so it doesn't you know, quite give you your abilities quite as fast as it did before, but it still gives them extremely quickly, especially if you have the other things that give you your uh, abilities back faster that I stated previously. But what this does do is every single time you use an ability, not only will it give you that increase, increase recharge rate it will also increase the damage of your other abilities aka if you throw your grenade your melee and barricade will do more damage and vice versa right and for the perks i use rocket launcher reserves and solar and arc damage resistant which is a single perk i also use the um blast radius mod which makes it so i become charged with light every single time i get multi kills with um, either a rocket launcher or a grenade launcher, which as I said, Salvage Savo is really good for. All right, now for the other uh, parts of my armor, this isn't exactly needed, except for it does help a lot. All right, so for the helmet, I use rocket launcher ammo finder, arc siphon, as well as reactive pulse. So what rocket launcher ammo finder will do is it lets you be able to get more ammo. So it's really helpful for getting Yalhorn ammo. And for the arc siphon, every single time you get a multi-kill with an arc weapon, it will generate an orb of light, which makes you, you know, when paired with other mods, it can make you charged with light, which then can apply a multitude of effects. And I use reactive pulse because basically if you finish an enemy, you're going to be invincible while in that animation, which is extremely helpful. For the arms, I use bolstering detonation as well as grenade launcher loader and high energy fire. So bol bolstering detonation makes it so every single time I hit, do damage with my grenade, I'm going to get class ability uh, energy back, which is extremely helpful because we're going to have our grenade really often. So we're going to be able to, you know, also get our uh, class ability back a lot quicker. I already really went over my um, heart of inmost light mods I use, so I won't go th into that again. For my boots, I use Rocket Launcher Scavenger, which is the new seasonal mod, which only takes one slot, so it's extremely helpful. Absolution and Taking Charge. And then I use, for my mark, I use Outreach as well as Powerful Friends. So uh, yeah, those that is my build for this. I easily destroyed this guy in my first try by myself, so I feel like if you follow these tips, you, should, you can do it too. If you want to see a build over the Hunter and Warlock, feel free to comment that down below. And if... I get enough requests to do it, which is like five. I'll, <laughs> I'll do, I'll make a video for that. If you want to see any other missions covered, feel free to comment that down below. I love making builds and just explanation videos. Also, if you have any feedback, feel free to comment that down below as well. I'm a small creator and I would absolutely 
love feedback, whether that's the small things like, hey, your voice sounds dumb. Um, you know, I can try changing that. But uh, yeah, I hope you guys did enjoy it. found something useful. If you know any friends that can find this video useful, make sure to share with them. And I hope you have a good rest of the day. Peace.